Hello everybody. Uh, today I want to talk about how you decode your RPL labels and how you find information on your historic General Motors car. In particular, people have been watching the videos on my Camaro and I've actually had a few comments of people uh, trying to understand how to decode these. So this morning I'm going to try to show you a few of the resources you can use to understand the content of your historic GM car. Uh, there are several resources I've used at digging into my Camaro and I have had some experience in the GM systems and uh, I'll try to give you an explanation of of what's available and how these systems work. They're really fairly complex and I'm sure I'll miss a few details uh, but I'll give you the gist of things that maybe will help you uh, dig through. So to start with I'm going to skip RPOs altogether for a second. Uh, there, is a, there is a facility in Sterling Heights, uh, Michigan, uh, known as the GM Heritage Center. It's really a wonderful place, and I'll show you how to access, the, access it online in a few moments. Um, it's not open to the public for individuals, but uh, groups can schedule time to come in. And it's a facility that, you know, typically they have a hundred old uh, historic GM cars on the floor that you can go in and walk around. And years ago when I was uh, first there, uh, they had quite an extensive paper and microfilm collection. Uh, they were bringing together all the records that they could find, uh, historical records. And from what I see on their website, um, it looks to me like they've done a pretty good job of converting a lot of it into electronic format and making it available to you. Uh, the Heritage Center is a really fantastic place. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be there, mm, I don't know, two or three times in the past, and it's really cool to be able to walk through and, and uh, walk around all those historic cars. I'll show you in a minute how you can get some information on your old GM car through their facilities. Uh, and then we're going to talk about RPOs. Um, RPOs are a, a regular production option. There are also some other things called limited production options, special options, there's a variety, but for the most part, if you have a GM car, uh, you're mostly worried about your regular production options. And there are kind of three levels. Now, RPOs are a three-digit or a three-character code that defines how your GM vehicle is built. Um, in addition to that, there are like special RPOs called broadcast codes that in the assembly plant, they will, have, they will have a build sheet, and the build sheet specifies what parts go on the car as it goes down the assembly line. Sometimes those are the straight RPOs uh, that you'll see commonly, and sometimes these broadcast codes are even more detailed, and I'll explain that a little bit more in, the moment, in a moment. Every vehicle, I don't know when they started doing this, but every vehicle in recent history that I'm aware of, has an RPO label somewhere in the car. Uh, depends on the kind of vehicle. In my Camaro, it's on the underside of the uh, console lid. In a lot of cars, it's in the trunk. It could be on the trunk lid. It could be um, in the glove box. It could be even under hood on some vehicles. But it's intended to be a service parts label. In other words, when you go in to buy parts for your car, you find that label, you find the RPO, and the dealer can select based on that RPO. Uh, they should know how to service your vehicle, what the specs should be, and what parts, uh, where in the parts list to look, what the options were on your car. Um, in more recent years, uh, they've even started to do that on a QR code uh, that you can read with your phone, and, and you won't find it with all the RPOs uh, printed out uh, that you can read directly. A few cautions, I guess, about RPOs. Uh, there are a lot of rules for how you assign an RPO. Um, as you can imagine, there are only three character codes. So there's a limited number, and in a company as big as like GM and the number of vehicles we build, eventually you run out of codes. It doesn't take that long before every three-letter code, three-letter and digit code is used up. In addition, they're partitioned by the type of part. So engines, you'll almost always see engines will have an L code, right? LT1, famous RPO code. Um, but because there are only three-digit codes, these codes get reused. I'll use LT1 as an example. 
Um, after several years of a code being inactive, I don't remember, it's five, six, seven, th there's a rule. Uh, once the code's been inactive for a number of years, it can, it can be reassigned. So if you're going to go back and decode your old, older GM car, I think we've used LT1 at least three times. It's really Chevy, it's a famous performance engine, right? So we used it once in the Camaros back in the 60s, once in the 90s, and it's now being used again. Um, I think it's still in, you know, maybe it's now discontinued again. But, but we reuse and recycle those numbers. So be careful if you're decoding. It, it could point to multiple parts, multiple engines, depending on the year of your car. Um, also, two parts that have the same RPO code aren't always the same part. If you have an RPO for a rear axle that says on your label, it's like, like the Camaro says GU6. Well, GU6 is a 342 gear, but it doesn't specify whose axle. Basically, any axle with a GU6 would be a 342, but the axles may be all different. Uh, also, sometimes like with engines, uh, the same RPO might get used multiple places and they'll have different dress parts or different, uh, say, front engine and accessory drives and have the same RPO. So an RPO doesn't always drive a single part number. There could be multiple part numbers of assemblies against a single RPO. This is really a challenge, it's really a trick, and the engineering teams work with the administrators of the RPO system to decide what the right breakdown is so that when a car comes in for service or warranty work uh, that we understand what the content is and and the car gets serviced properly. Finally, to break this back down, and I started alluded to this in the beginning, um, there are really three levels. And there may be more than three, but I'll, I'll stick to three. The first level is there's a marketing option code, and then there's a component RPO, and then there's a detailed broadcast code that the plant uses. And ultimately, they're all RPOs, they're all regular production options, but they're used differently. On my Camaro, I'll use my 85 IROC, if you went to the dealer parts book to an order sheet, order sheet, you would say, I want an automatic transmission with overdrive. The code for that is an MXO. And MXO was the marketing code for an overdrive automatic. It could be any overdrive automatic, but MXO said it had an overdrive. I believe it was an MX1 would be a non-overdrive, like when we had three speeds and top gear was, was uh, one to one. So from a marketing standpoint, when you walked in and you looked at the sticker on the vehicle, the sticker would say it had an MXO. Then, when you ordered that and through a dealer's guide, you'd roll down to the next level, and they'd say, well, gee, that's a Camaro IROC, um, an MXO is an MD8 700R4 transmission. That's pretty good, and most people can look around and you'll say, hey, it's an MD8. But when you get to the plant, MD8 isn't good enough. You need to go down a level further, because which MD8 do you want? Um, each transmission is built for the application. A 700R4 for a four-cylinder is built much differently than a 700R4 for a V8 or for a, a high-performance V8. And they'll change the valve bodies and the torque converters based on the amount of torque in the engine, gear ratio, and so forth. So there, there's another set. Um, I don't remember what mine is off the Camaro, um, but if you go down the list, uh, there were codes such as, uh, I think it was 5Y6, 5Y4, those are the broadcast codes. And if you go underneath your car and you look at the transmission very carefully on the, on the component, you'll find a tag that has a three-digit code. And that three-digit code you can, is an RPO, broadcast code, and you can go back to the parts catalog, dealer parts catalog, and you can find that code and it will tell you the part number of your transmission and it will tell you the build content of your transmission for speedometer calibration, valve body calibration, and all of the parts that roll up. So you kind of have this three-level breakdown. And that three-level breakdown holds for some other things. Um, uh, transmissions and axles are a big one. 
Uh, because at rear axles, for example, um, you have brakes on the rear axles, and so each brake code will cause a code in the axle. So you'll have a 342 axle with disc brakes will get a certain code, and it would be different than a 342 axle with drum brakes. So it depends on how the part is going to be uh, supplied to the assembly plant and how the assembler knows which one to pick out of the rack and build into your car. Giving that as background, uh, here I'm going to stop in a moment and I'm going to transfer over and I'm going to go to a, a screenshots on my computer and I'm going to walk you through, uh, first of all, how to find the Heritage Center and how to find some of the technical information from the GM Heritage Center and then how to find some RPO uh, information and I found a re really nice uh, online reference for uh, GM parts information that uh, someone has done a very nice job of assembling and scanning and, uh, and putting parts information uh, online. All right, as I was explaining a few moments ago, the uh, Heritage Center is a great source of information for researching your classic uh, GM General Motors car. And this is their home page. Um, it's called the GM Heritage Center at gmheritagecenter.com. And it's, uh, it's a nice website. It's a beautiful facility. If you were ever part of a, a, able to be part of a group that uh, could tour it, really, really nice. But for the sake of this morning, we're talking about researching cars. Uh, they have a section here called Archive. And as you go down Archive, there are two sections. I mean, there are many things you could go dig through, but there are two sections. One is historical brochures, and one is vehicle information kits. Uh, if you hit historical brochures, and I've already had this page up, so you filter by, I'll use my 85 Camaro, so filter by Camaros of the 80s, and here is a copy of the original dealership brochure that if, you'd have, if you would have gone into the dealership, this is what you would have picked up. And there's a download link here where you can get your own copy. For the sake of talking about it today, I've already downloaded that, and you can see it here. And, you know, it walks you through the specifications and the advertising and what was... Uh, what you would uh, ask for when you went to the dealer to order the car. So, pretty nice resource. Good old full-colored um, brochures. The second one is, if you come down here and you go to the one called Vehicle Information Kits, well, they mention up here, I'll stop for a second, um, you can order printed information in some cases, uh, this will give the uh, give the um, vehicles that they have online, and so here is 1985 Chevrolet Camaro, and this is a 120-page package of all the specifications that the GM Heritage Center had available, and it goes through. Starts at the beginning with all of the basic uh, information of identifying RPOs and uh, option codes, engine codes. Uh, pretty nice. I, I will I will go next to. It's hard to scroll down through all 120 pages. So here is I've already got it down to the uh, dealer order guide section. Of so here was a num were a number of the RPOs for Camaros out of the dealer order guide from January of '85. So here's for a Z28. These were all the color trim combinations and the color codes, uh, the engine options uh, that you could get. Here's that MXO transmission option for for the uh, automatic and 
If we come down a little further, here are the different uh, codes that you could uh, could select for a Z28. Here's the detail for an IROC sport equipment package. And you can see here we've got uh, LB9, MXO, 342 gear with standard. And here is all the content and options. Now these are all marked up. And I would say don't be, um, there could be mistakes. These, are, these uh, dealer order guides were revised from time to time. And you can even see here that uh, these were marked up as this was somebody's working copy. And as, as changes occurred, uh, they, were, they were modifying it. But this one's a really great resource. Um, if you just do a search on GMRPO code listings, there are a couple in here like this one. That's uh, This is a 2000 vintage uh, copy of an RPO list that somebody has posted. Then finally, um, in resources, there's this site called gmpartswiki.com. And someone has gone to, uh, the people that run this site have gone to a lot of work to digitize old parts manuals. They don't have all parts manuals, but they have a lot of them. And you can see going back to the 40s. Um, and what you'll get is parts pages that look a lot like this. See, this is an example out of Parts and Illustration Catalog 17F, June 1988. I'll tell you from a Camaro standpoint, they have the June 88 and they have a 1992 uh, catalog. And those pretty well cover the, the life of the car. If you uh, come up here and do a, you can search on part numbers here. And what I've already done is, a, is an RPO search. Uh, you select the catalog that you want. And I picked 1988 and said I want Camaro. And you hit search and it'll refresh the page. Uh, but here, if you do a do a selection, here's a whole listing of all of the RPOs uh, active in 1988 that's in the front of the parts catalog. And so it'll tell you the RPO, the first year they used it, the last year that they used it. And so if it's an 88, it was still going on. Uh, if you hit these little uh, thumbnails up here in the corners, you'll um, uh, you, you'll go to the next page and you can click through the, the whole list of what was available. Um, if you click on these pages, uh, this site will bring up a PNG file that it's just a photo file, but you can save the photo file uh, back to your hard drive and keep it for reference if you want. So this one works uh, very nicely. Then going to the transmissions, um, I said you had an MXO, which is the overdrive automatic. For the Camaro, we know it's an MD8, 700R4. So that's the next level RPO. Then if you move forward, if you went underneath your car and you went to the transmission and found the label, the name tag on the transmission, and then brought that back, you could get an assembly part number for the transmission. And here's the build content for what, um, what is part of that transmission in order to make it uh, right for your application. I haven't found a way to find this code by, um, by starting at a VIN number and working your way down yet. Uh, there probably is a way, but Right now, the best way is go to your transmission, work your way back. And these codes work uh, also for engines. So here's the engine assembly codes. And you can see for an LB9 in 85, there were four of them, which probably depended on uh, transmission or rear axle or emissions class. Uh, 
they had different ones assigned for each application. Also, this is a parts and illustration catalog. So if you want to understand the content of your particular car, here's the 1985-88F. These are all the part numbers, parts and part numbers. Uh, these are the group codes. Uh, GM has a code uh, that if you know this number, you know what kind of part it is. Uh, generally, threes are uh, related to engine. And fours are related to transmission, for example. But each, um, they, they have something they call a universal part code, U, UPC FNA. And, and, uh, and so they code things by a standard number and a standard name. If I go over here and hit the thumbnail, here's a picture of what that, what all the parts are. So you could come in the picture and go, gee, I think I need a fuel rail. And there's a nine. And then I can go back over here to the nine. And it's not a few, or it's a tube. A tube intake, command fold, right hand and left hand. So those are the runners. And if you go back to the search page, you can also search on the part number and get some more valuable information out of that. Here's the second page for, again, this is the emissions one. There are also uh, base engine ones that will get you down to rod bearings and, and so forth. But if you're looking for parts, oftentimes uh, you can use the part numbers here as a, as a search. You can use this feature. Uh, to go back and make sure that you're buying the right aftermarket part because many of the aftermarket manufacturers will reference to a GM part number. Very handy. And finally, I'm going to show you here the, this is a spreadsheet. This is a decode of my RPO label from my IROC. And I went through these sources. And so some of them came from the parts, that parts manual that I just showed you. Some came from the 1985 Dealer Orders Guide. Uh, there are some that came from a master RPO list because I couldn't find them in another list. But um, you've got the A's up here that are seats and windows, uh, B's that are interior parts. Um, here are your spoiler and uh, stripe for the uh, hood. They've got uh, speedometer calibrations. Somewhere in here I wanted to show, let's see, LB9 engine. There's the transmission. So in, in this list, they not only showed you the MXO merchandising option, but they also showed you that it was an MD8. What they don't show you is the next level down, which is the broadcast code for the specific MD8 that you have in your car. And once again, there's the axle ratio 342. But this is how the whole build looks uh, down to uh, springs. Uh, the springs get selected based on the weight of the individual car based on the option content. So there are a number of those. And again, they would have broadcast codes so the assembler on the line uh, knows which pieces to put on your particular car to match the build sheet. So I hope that that helps those of you trying to understand uh, the content of your classic or historic GM car. And uh, I wish you uh, success in your searches.